I have been doing a ton of work with Next.js and React lately, and most of that is due to the AI SDK stuff I've been doing. And when I initially got back into this, I was not using TRPC, I was just using the raw form actions, I was doing all this stuff. And you know, I've come to the conclusion that I think TRPC pretty much got it right. I've tried a bunch of different things. I did it with just the raw server actions. I did it with just like server actions and React query. And I think this is it. I think for Next.js applications, for React applications, um, React Native applications too, there's kind of just nothing better. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about why in 2024, two years after all the hype and all the, the initial T3 stack and all that stuff, why I really still think that TRPC is still kind of just the goat. It's amazing. So initially when I first wrote this application, I was doing it heavily with the new server actions. I wanted to play with these, get used to the new Next.js, and I was doing it that way. So I created these helper functions. So we're just gonna use schedule as an example here. In my helper schedule.ts function right here, we have this function right here, get user schedule one day. And this is just a normal backend function. I'm going through, I'm getting or creating the profile. I'm If they don't have a profile, I'm returning an error. And then we go through, we get their schedule entry. Well, then we return it. Very basic stuff here. And then to actually use this in the application, what I was doing is I had my actual client side code here, my manage schedule.tsx. What I was doing is I was just wrapping these server actions in React Query. So I'd go through and I'd say, okay, day query equals use query, pass in my query key. My query function would be this get user schedule day right here. So we'd actually call this backend function here within React Query and run it. And the reason why I was calling it in React Query is because if I didn't use React Query, I'd have to deal with my own loading states. I'd have to deal with some use effects. I'd have to deal with a bunch of random nonsense, which I just didn't want to do. And ultimately React Query made a lot of sense here. I did a bunch of stuff here, but you'll notice there's kind of a lot of boilerplate and a lot of different things I'm doing myself here. And I did this for a while. I basically built the whole application like this. And, you know, I kind of just sat back and I looked at it and I'm like, you know, this looks and feels a lot like TRPC and could probably just be turned into some TRPC procedures. And ultimately, I think that's really the best way of doing things. And I went through and I went ahead and I've rewritten all of this into TRPC. So I basically took my backend functions here. So I took this get user schedule one day. I took that. I turned it into a TRPC procedure. And that, it's just a better experience. It works really fucking well. And let me show you why. So right here, we're going to go in. Uh, let me go to that actual card. So let's do manage schedule. We'll go to where we were in there. So edit day. Perfect. So now my client side code for get user schedule day, it now consists of this. It is this one line, instead of all of this nonsense and all these different things that I have to set up here, it's just one line. It is day query equals api.schedule.getUserDay. user day. And then the backend code here is basically the same as what it was before. So we can go in here and we can say, okay, so this get user schedule day is an auth procedure. And this is really important. This is actually, honestly, of all the things TRPC does, it does a lot of things well. It does, the inputs are great. Um, the end-to-end -end type safety is really great. The fact that it reacts, uh, wraps React Query is awesome because again, I think for client-side interaction with your backend, anything you're dealing with forms, anything you're dealing with more complex state, React Query just can't be beat. It is so freaking good. I've used it for many years now. I've been using it and I still love it to this day. And obviously TRPC wraps that and we have this great input section here, but I think these these procedures are really, really good. I think these are, no one really talks about these all that much, but I think these are honestly some of the best things that TRPC has, and it abstracts so much boilerplate away. And they're basically, because what they are is they're middlewares, but they're middlewares the way you want middlewares to actually work. They will update your context. They will give you type safety. They will throw errors when they need to. They're a really nice way of working with things. So here I just have my get user schedule day, it's a query, and then we just have the same code. We're just getting our entry and we're returning it with way less boilerplate. And if we look at this auth procedure itself, we go in here, this auth procedure is using this is auth function. And this is auth function is just going through and checking like, hey, do we have our context.profile? And if we do, we return the next function, but what we're doing here is we're resetting the profile object on our context to not be potentially undefined. We're setting it to be like, hey, we know that the user has a profile now and you can handle that accordingly. So instead of having to do that initial check of get or create user profile, and then if there is something, throw an error. Now we've already done that here and we already have access to it, which is really nice. And if we go another layer up here to get like what this initial context is, we're do, um, 
we're defining our trpc context up here with our get or create profile right here we're going ahead getting our profile and then we're passing in some basic information here just headers and ip the reason why i'm grabbing ip is just for the rate limiter and that's another great thing we can do here is i have this rate limiter middleware and all this is going to do is this is using the upstash uh, rate limiter just to make sure that like this application doesn't get ddos because especially since we're doing open ai calls in here i don't want this to get smash because that would really suck so we have a nice little rate limiter on here we pass in our sliding window and then every single request will run through this rate limiter so before these um these auth procedures weren't running through it but now we're just chaining these so we can just chain these procedures chain all these things and it'll just work it's a really really great system for working with our applications and the last thing i wanted to show off here is actually that these things are compatible with react server components so one of the things that you can see with these new rsc's is they're now asynchronous so it makes a lot of sense to to just call a function at the top here and then just say like await delay but we can just pretend delay here would be some important data fetch so we just do await data fetch and then call it there so those like actual functions that i was initially writing within that helper directory made a lot of sense there because those would just be the functions which i could call within my components and I was initially thinking, you know, TRBC doesn't make a lot of sense there because it only works with React Query. It's just, I don't want to put React Query in my server components. So it didn't make a huge amount of sense. And then I was like, okay, well then maybe I could put like those helper functions inside of the TRPC queries and abstract my database logic into those. But then that gets kind of weird and I just didn't want to deal with it. So it's like, yeah, okay, we'll just do it this way. But I was actually wrong. Um, I'm not fully certain, and this is not a setup guide or a tutorial on any of this stuff. If you wanna use this, just use Create T3 app. There's nothing better for this, just go use that. And what we can actually do is within these RSCs, we can actually do await API. So when we import our API here, we are we get two options. We can import from TRPC React. We can also import from TRPC Server. So if we do TRPC Server, we can literally just call const profile equals await api.user.getUserProfile, and we can call our TRPC procedures like normal functions. And with that capability, we pretty much can now do everything we'd want to do in our application with TRBC. A great example of this is within our action.tsx file. These are all, this is the new AI SDK thing and we have to go through and we have to actually fetch data within these render functions. And what we can do is we can literally just say, okay, const workouts equals await api.workout.getAllWorkouts and we're just doing a TRPC function call. We're basically just calling it like functions and then we can go through, return that data into our component and it just works. So that's really one of the, what I wanted to show off. I think, uh, for anything I'm doing in React in Next.js, this also works amazing with React Native. I have a video on that, uh, which I'll link down below. It's a really great way of working with things. And I think, um, you know, the hype isn't there anymore. It's not the like cool new thing, but it's just a workhorse, man. It works really well. And uh, I think for any React projects you're doing or anything I'm doing here, there's nothing better. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.